Yeah. Right, so they're quite in the too hot. I'll do a little oh, bit I'd of... like to go swimming in the 83. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so hello everybody. We have... Oh, I can get this better. Uh, we have today a big crowd and I'm, I, I, I'm sorry I forgot. I put the wrong date in the invitation so we have only one person who came, uh, who's, who joined us through Skype. And the invitation was outdated. I just copied the template and... Uh, it, it had an old date, so if somebody caught it, I would fix it, but nobody even noticed. <laughs> uh, but we have local metaphysical group and friends which uh, join us, and thank you everybody. Now, we should look at this camera, not this camera, but you know, they're close, that doesn't matter. Um, we invite, uh, what happened, uh, last time I invited, I prayed and invited uh, investments or uh, jobs or anything for me and, and Jim and actually thank you for your prayers and I got an interview which is coming uh, but I need a real job not only an interview so mm -hmm. uh, keep keep, uh, keep your uh, prayers and uh, intentions maybe that's what may make the difference Jim and I need some way of uh, of getting income we can't continue much longer for sure we cannot uh, other than that, uh, we invite our usual suspects, <laughs> uh, all higher energies, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad are welcome, uh, God, uh, ancient God and group spirit L is welcome, uh, friendly extraterrestrials, we have really good, sorry, we have really tough experience with uh, reptilians coming through. Jim doesn't feel good after that. So, unless there is a really important message, we probably would like reptilians not to come. So, if that's a message for fishing. Anything else? Okay. Um, yes, uh, we have questions from, from lots of questions. So, if Lakesh comes, that would be great because we have uh, a backlog of questions from people. So the, that's what we'll do. And uh, people online and in, in the room have their priority in asking questions. I guess that's about it. I'll start with a little. Do you have anything else? You can. You, oh, can, good. you can. You can leave. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Have a good time. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hello. There are as many people here. Is it Lakesh? Yes, I am. Lakesh, welcome. How are you? I am fine. What's new? Many things are new, but I don't know even where to start to tell you. Let's start from something pleasant. Pleasant, pleasant. Yes, more celebrations? Yes. I have graduated once again from another curriculum, and I am having my celebration tomorrow. Congratulations. Thank you, and then I will be working in the belt. But I will still be able to see you. Ah, what are you going to do there in the belt? When you are in the belt, you are preparing for your next curriculum, and you are also keeping the planet running in a positive and safe manner. Everybody goes to the belt after their celebration for a period of time that is set by the privilege level. Mm -hmm. how, long in our, uh, how, long, how, how long would it be on, in our time until you finish your belt? Stuff? Perhaps a month. I see. It is a preparation time for my next curriculum and a preparation time for uh, finding what is happening with the planet and b being in touch with the things that I have not been in touch with while during my prior curriculum. Does that make sense yes. to you? Yes. What are the other news? <sighs> my significant other has also graduated recently and had her celebration yesterday. Congratulations to her. Yes. She did scientific judgment of the universe. Very good. She's judging the universe every day. Yes, it is called judgment because it is not a true and final practice, but it is a judgment on the individual's part of what is actually occurring in the universe. Uh -huh. And given all the different relativities, signs, and information, then they can make a judgment on which way the universe is heading and the outcomes of many different scenarios. Wow. How do you use on uh, the colonies and Earth's uh, affairs? Earth affairs, yes, there's been many small and one large attack by reptilians of an unfriendly type, as I have, no, no, it wasn't me that said it to you, but I have been thinking about it, but others have told you about. Mm -hmm. And um, this is very sad because the long two-hour attack caused much problems because it is ongoing. It is ongoing. It does not just last for the two hours. It goes on for the longer the attack is, the longer it lasts in your present time, and it lasted for almost 10 days. So, oh. and is it finished? It is finished, but it has left some people very disoriented and with lower frequencies because it, it, that's what it does attack, is the, is the thoughts leading to frequency levels. Ukraine events, are they related? There is some relativity there, yes. But there was much relativity in prior attacks with what has happened with me. I was personally attacked, but I did not know it. And no one was monitoring me for that kind of thing. But my out-of-planetary uh, existence, if you will, was definitely attacked and strained in many ways. So I have been limited to one-on-one -on -one, uh, communication with some people. I understand. Because otherwise it's deflected, can be deflected. But right now we do not know if they're still in this realm with me or if they have passed through because our detection equipment has not set up for that sort of thing. But these do and Tukur and Tepe have are the ones that had discovered it for me and had given me that information. How are they doing? They are doing fine. 
the weather and things of earthly manifestation weather-wise are doing much better than they had been prior to this week. But still much remains questionable of what's going to happen next. And they are working on that and determining what factors in the weather will be most difficult to for earthlings to handle. And especially they are working in your area, the North American continent. Others are working in other continents, of course, but the Tipe and Tukur and Dizu are in this continental area. So let's start with questions. Who are you ready with questions? Anybody have your own questions? I will attempt questions. If I feel any kind of interference, I will not answer. Oh. Because there has been much problem with that. That is where the attack was. Um, uh, Sophia, I think you are most ready of everybody. Uh, just one second, I'll turn my microphone to you and turn your sound on. And you're online. Is this looking good? Yes. My last one. Oh, hello. Hello, you are loud. Oh, I'm too loud? No, you're good. You are good okay. now. Okay. How have you been? I have been better, but I am doing well now. Okay, I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. And how are you doing? <laughs> uh, much better, thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. I have a, I have a question. Um, okay, you know, uh, on in, on the earth, we many people consider the reason we're in such turmoil and there's so much anger and war and violence is because of uh, that mankind fell away from God at some point. There's a certain belief system, uh, which we call the fall of man, where people fell away. The original Adam and Eve, who were infused with God's spirit, fell away, and that's why the earth is such a mess. But when you look at us from the outside, from your point of view and your understanding of our history, why are we in such a dark mess? This world is so beautiful, but we are in a darkness in many cases with each other. Let me go back to the Lyran creation, which was the original Garden of Eden on their planet, which was destroyed out of jealousy from the reptilians. They mm -hmm. were they felt it unfair that that the, the Lyrans could have a perfect Eden and they were left out from the makers. The makers did not include them into the, to the garden of Eden in, on Lyra. So that was jealousy that caused that to be destroyed. On Earth, there is some similar facts. Your diversity causes problems with your way of handling your society in a positive way and let me let me tell you something about earth that i have known but have not shared there are so many diverse alien mm, species genesises from seeding on your planet that it is even more diverse than most planets. In fact, it's probably the most diverse planet in this galaxy because of so many different species have left their hybridization, their seeds, their upbringing. You have many different societies and many different cultures and, and many of them are reflected in the universe, some of these cultures. Does that make sense to you? Now, yes. now the reason there is so much fallenness is because of communication. They cannot understand each other's cultures and cannot understand each other's ways. So they have become diverse to one another, and this is where telepathy will bring you back together eventually as a planet which they 
are working on. You are at the beginnings of your evolution for the entire planet. It has just come time when the fourth dimensional energy is stronger than it's ever been before because of the enlightenment of humankind. Ah, uh, there are many pockets that are still dark, of course, but we see that there are ways for it to be coming together more and more slowly all the time so that within the next 200 years your unity will be to such a degree that fourth dimensional energy will not be able to be stopped and then you will bring forth your new evolution never your new foresight your new telepathy your new thought patterns, if you will. They're growing in you now because they are inevitable to move forward. Change is inevitable. You must move either forward or backwards. You cannot stay in stasis forever. It does not work. It cannot happen. So you are moving forward as a planet, and this is a wonderful thing. And you are going to discover eventually that this kind of evolution will take care of this fallen thought process, this fallen man process, because man fell, but only under the influence of others outside of their realm. Do you understand this? Yes, thank you. Very good. So, what we, who we call Satan, Lucifer, who was also jealous and it, wanted to steal Adam and Eve's position. Yes. Would that be equivalent to reptilians in other cultures? Yes, it's considered a Luciferian thought process where anyone could be Lucifer with the, with the thought process of Lucifer. Do you understand? This was one of the early reptilians that they named Lucifer. And oh, he... He generated a thought process that went through the galaxy and destroyed Lyra. Do you understand? And now this thought process is all over the universe and has seeds in the earth as well. But it is only not a person anymore, but a thought process and a thought power that he created. He is not a person any longer. He is no longer with us. But he brought about many like himself. Mm -hmm. Does that Thank make you, sense? Thank you, yes. I, I have a question. I was told by a um, spiritualist that my energy spirals in a totally different direction from all other people. Yes. Our energy spirals, most people's energy spirals right, mine spirals left. Yes. And he had never seen that. Is that coming from um, Pleiadian uh, DNA or my hybrid part? Or? It is also coming from the fact that you have changed. Uh, let me let me go back. Yes, the, partially it is from alien DNA. The other part of this is that you did not grasp the alien DNA at first and you... Uh, turned your life in a different direction than it should have been turned to move forward in a positive way. Do you know what I mean? When you went to a certain city and changed your life, mm -hmm. and this caused your spiral to, to reverse because you were actually a heterosexual, and you were dealing with things elsewise. But it also was in relationship to your learning about who you are in the eyes of others. You see, and now your, your spiral is slowing and going to be in the opposite direction as it should be. Do you understand? There's part of it. You do understand part of it. Uh, yes, yeah, so is, is it not a good thing that it's going in the opposite direction? It means I'm not yet... No, I'm no. It, there are positive things happening in either direction. But when it goes the opposite direction, more things go out than come in. 
Does that make sense to you? Things are going out of you when it spins in that direction. And when it comes back to the right direction, then more things will come in, which you need. You need things to come in. At that time, you needed things to go out. Now you need things to come in. Does that make sense to you? Okay. But, yes. but most people get rid of their things in a different way than you did. You're very unique. <laughs> Thank you. Does this make sense to you? Uh, um, yes. In some uh, ways. It would seem that most people would have their spiral going in the opposite direction if they're not completely in their fullness of power and their path. But True. He said I, I was the only one he's ever met. So then I thought, that's unusual. You changed your path. Yeah. That is why. Uh, who is going next? Thank you, Lieutenant. You're Thank welcome. You. Uh, Charles, are you ready? Blessings. Um, Blessings. Can Thank you just Thank you. Before, so you can fit in the other camera? Just leave it in the chair. Yep. Yep. Very good. I understand. Yes. Charlie. Lakesh. Yes. yes. I understand that extraterrestrials have computer technology, yes. and I'm curious if your computer technology is programmed with programming languages like we have here? Some parts of them are programmed with languages such as your, your Earth kind of computer languages. However, we have an extra element that we add that is organic. It, we add the organic part to it to make it personalized for each of us to be able to actually get to where we want to go quick more quickly and to and it also knows what we want because it knows our makeup and it knows that we are intentioned for this I see so yes but yes we also have computer language that is far beyond what you have of course and th this computer language speaks directly to the organic so oh. You must have the organic connected with this computer language so that it is properly translated into the other elements of the machinery. I Does see. that make sense to you? Yes, thank you. And um, it is very connected, and if anything should go wrong with that, it is very serious. So something must be done immediately with that. Uh huh. Any other questions? No, thank you. Can you move it upwards? Okay. Mm, you prefer okay. Margie. Yes, I do. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, I guess I'm curious about uh, if there's guidance for any directions I should be going in uh, personally. Uh, Anything else? Many people ask this question. The, the problem with the answer is that we cannot tell you exactly where you need to go. Part of your journey is finding your direction. And part of your life here, the, your being born into this life, was to learn some of these things that you are asking about. And with, if I would tell you, then you would have to relive this life to learn it again. Oh, no. Because, <laughs> because you would not have learned it on your own, and it would be different. Does this make sense to you? Sure. But you do have talents. And let me tell you, there is a direction that you know you want to go. There is a direction that you, you feel led to do. And I say, do that. These are the things that will make you most happy, is to be the person that you are. You see, people have come and they, they feel they are smaller and not worthy and whatever of the, the things that they want to do. And they feel unworthy and, or that they don't have the talent to do it. However, it would not come into your mind to be that way if there was not some way to get there if there was not some reason for that thought to be there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I want you to evaluate, go in with your meditation and find that most 
gratifying moment in your life and that will draw out these talents in you that may be hidden or may be part of something that you feel unattainable. Do you understand? Because it is not unattainable. Even though you feel it might be, it is not. Otherwise you would not entertain it. You could not entertain it if it wasn't attainable. Suppose, like right now I think I'm going in about three directions. That is fine for no. now. For now, you may go three directions, but you know they will merge. One direction will become greater than the others. One direction will become a greater significance than the others. And that is when the talent from this and the talent from that will merge into the talent for the direction that you should go. Because all talents can be merged together to work together because they are all within you. They are all part of you. So they merge together to make a one greater scenario. Does that make sense to you? Yes. yes. Good. That is what I can tell you. Now you must discover which of those scenarios is greater and which one of those is the real you. Because the real you will shine through that scenario. Okay. Very good. Lisa, do you have a personal question? Yes. Lisa? I had a general question, not personal. Yes, Lisa. Hello, Hello. how are you today? I'm wonderful, thank you. Very good. I was wondering if you could explain the process of ascension. The process of ascension. I have explained it before. The process of expansion. Uh, 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 <laughs> Jim's mouth is dry. Um, the process of its ascension starts very low. In fact, your 12, 21, 12, 2012. That, that, that was a day of great expectation, right? Yes. And everybody thought, oh, after that there'll be much change. Oh, after that there'll be much difference. But no, what happens is the spark was lit that day. The spark was lit that day. And from that spark, very, very small, a change is coming. Some people felt it even as a spark. But most people said, eh. Nothing happened. <laughs> I am so disappointed. Nothing happened. But you know, something happened. It started as a spark. And as the light grows, it grows out like this. And it encompasses more people all the time. You see this? Yes. It comes out. The ascension started with few. There was, well, few th thousands on your planet that already were enlightening, becoming enlightened. And those people are moving out in this direction like a beam of light. You see how a beam of light goes? It goes out like that. Yes? Yes. That is how the ascension is. It will gather in people until it's so large it is overcoming all things. And that is how it has and will happen on your planet. Is Your planet is now waking. It's starting to wake. And as it wakes up, it will gather more people into it. The light will become broader and, and it broader and bring people in. I see it happening on your planet all the time where someone is not aware and then they run into someone that gives them Reiki or understanding and they become wanting to be part of this group of people the enlightened, and it will grow until your entire planet is ready for that enlightenment. Does that make sense to you? It will take time, perhaps 200 years, maybe slightly less, maybe slightly more, but that is the estimated period of time that it will take from this time. And we have just started to see it starting to span out just a little. But this is how your ascension will move. Does that make sense to yes, you? Yes, it does. Thank Next. you. Yes. Any more questions? 
I think Tuba Buddha's questions would be now good. Okay. Do you have them? Yes. I, oh, I want to make one thing very clear right now. I am not going to give anybody their org levels. It is impossible for me to do that right now until we make sure that the attack is totally finished. Later on I will be able to do that, but I will be able to answer other questions. Hybrid questions are okay as long as I can get in touch with the exact person. Okay, so here's some questions from Tuba Buddha. He asks, am I on the correct life path that I have agreed to, or have I gone astray? Are there any suggestions on how to do better? Let me tell you this, I was just talking to Margie and telling her that her life path is part of who she is and is part of how this lifetime is made up. I cannot tell you which life pattern to go to and it sounds to me and it is aware to me that this person already knows the answer to their questions. However, let me give you this word of advice. Your most correct, ultimate place and direction is that direction that makes you most happy and can be the most beneficial to others. And let me tell you why it makes you the most happy is because if you try another way to be make people happy, it will not work as well as the one intended in your heart the one intended in your talents and skills to be that what you are supposed to be. So you know that when you are going in a different direction, you are not being effective. And you know that you've, your body feels this. Your body understands this. You will, you will be more apt to be sickly if you are not going the correct direction. You will be more apt to be unhappy. You are more apt to be are cast out from society because you are not your true self. You must be who you are and when you are who you are in your perfection and you will know the direction that you must take. And this direction will bring you the greatest happiness. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Tuba Buddha also asks, will my mother ever leave the nursing home she is in? How can I help her get out? This is not for me to tell, I, I know the answer to this question. Mm -hmm. This question is a sad question because it is her time to be there. This is what is meant for her now. And she may not come out of the nursing home, but there are many things you can do for her. You can give her the love and attention that she needs. You can give her what she needs as an individual to continue to even grow in a nursing home. You say, that is impossible. I've never seen anybody grow in a nursing home. But yes, teaching, they can learn things. They can understand things. They can feel things. So they are not yet beyond the human capacity. They must, you must call her, talk to her, let her know what is going on in your world that is enlightening. What is going on in your world that is you are learning? Because if you must pass this information on so that she knows that you are well and that she can gather a growth within herself, within her chakras, it feeds her energy to know that others are well in her family. And you say, oh, well, she's not feeling well, she's depressed. You know, these times... There are times when the body is low and you, the spirit does not necessarily have to be low with the body. You've seen those people that have great joy even though their body is withered. Give her this joy. Let her understand it. Pray with her. Let her be lifted up because she does not have the spirit experience sorrow even though she's not feeling well. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. There you go. Thank you. Our people do this much. We help those that are aged. And most are happy. 
Wonderful. And they are, we have a tendency to unspin the chakras when they get too old and, and are not in comfort. We take the chakras and spin them down to their lower energy levels so that they can relax and go quietly and peacefully. And But they go on their own time as well. But their chakras are relaxed. Does that make sense to you? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Tupa Buddha um, says, I would like to give fully informed consent to have the Pleiadians take me whenever they feel the need to. Now that I... They are listening. Oh, wonderful. Um... <sighs> Now that I know that the red triangle language is a reptilian one, do you know why I was given a... and then it cuts off. You were given a reptilian? A message? A message? Oh, yes. It, it's not necessarily bad to get a message from the reptilians. Mm -hmm. If you have reptilian DNA, which I assume that you do, they are watching you and they are around you. So... Anyone that has hybrid DNA within them, that race species usually have some kind of guardian or watch person that is with you at least most of the day, if not all of the day. Because they want to see if any of the hybrid um, major features or cultural ideas come through, because this would tell them that rooted in the DNA there is cultural pasts and uh, DNA from the past in their culture. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Embedded in the hybrid DNA that each of the individuals has been given, there is a tendency to have past thoughts and past sequences of DNA that would bring back memories from a past generation or whenever someone does a past life regression, that DNA would have a life of its own and give its past lives as well. So um, this is what they look for in the actions and tendencies of the humans that have hybrid thoughts and patterns and DNA so that they would look for some of those traits from their cultures and, and see, and they're also wondering if it, it builds telepathic connections with that culture. Because some cultures ha that are hybrid are telepathic and others are not. So they're wondering if the telepathic cultures have a connection with the DNA that is within a human hybrid. There are so many things that they look for. I couldn't even tell you them all. There's a, there's a gigantic list, but those are some of the things. Okay? Yeah. Okay. How is uh, Tuba Buddha's song is doing? I do not know. Just a moment. It is hard for me now. I get I get self-conscious doing this because connections have been severed and it was very uncomfortable to learn this. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was making correct connections and I was not. They were deflecting them to other people and it was very disconcerting. So I want to make sure that this is a true connection. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> The child was ill? No. I am not making a connection then. Okay. We have another question from Tuba Buddha. Yes. Um, Tuba Buddha asks if he has been tested in dreams and what are the results? 
The result I do not know, but I can tell him that he was tested in dreams. Yes, he was, uh, this was an older form of the interview. Mm -hmm. They had tested several different kinds of interviews. And therefore, yes, in the dream process was one of the ways they did do. What the result of that is, the council only knows. They do not re release that information, but they do let us know which people are being contacted because we are interested on our planet as well because these could possibly be channels or communication sources for us. So. Was another question about love from him? didn't see that. Okay, so he asked if he gonna have a mate in this lifetime. He's 51 and he's sort of desperate. Desperate for a mate? Not for a mate. He kind of desperate in a way he lost, you know. He well, was hoping to marry and it didn't happen. Ah. Well, let me tell you this. I am not a Matchmaker? Is that what they call it? Matchmaker. But um, I do know that there was a time when he was in love. You were not very actively seeking a mate. You may say that you are, but there are parts of you that are set in your ways and feel undeserving of a mate at this point. You feel like giving up your freedom as an individual is part of a sadness that you would have with a mate. However, you are alone and would like a mate. The thing is about this is, it is, a, is it your highest calling to have a mate or are you becoming who you are in your true self First, I believe there is much questioning within you, and you must find an answer to the true self question. Do you understand this? Yes. Yes. If you have a question that surrounds that, let me know. Because I gave a fairly general answer for that. Uh, I think you wanted to go over the newer questions. That was a good idea because all the old ones we need to basically reshape them. Yeah. The newer ones are thinner. Um, so we take some questions from Brian. Okay. From Brian asks, "Who are the angelic group or very high vibrational group that are working with me and that surrounds me?" You are working with a gold light entity. They are like angels. They are very much like angels. In fact, they actually can take on the form of angels. But they are creational gold light beings that are very rarely seen in our day and age. I mean, they're seen, but they're not usually discovered by the humanity. This is a sign that you are coming about in your movement forward into the ascension, is your ability to be able to know that you are being visited by this kind of creature. And what was the other part of the question? Um, let's see. Can I move These on? are creational creatures. Can I move on to the next question? Yes. Who are the extraterrestrial group who I saw in the year 2008 in Indiana that I saw in the sky, orange orbs of light that blinked in and out of this reality? <sighs> that, <laughs> yes, orange orbs are reptilian groups, mm -hmm. yes. Um, but... I'm surprised that you could even see them because the, this particular reptilian group is usually in fourth dimension, but not always. Obviously, they were going in and out of fourth and third dimension. There must have been a problem with their vehicles at that time because usually you would not see orange orbs. Very, very few people have seen orange orbs. And this is a fourth dimensional ship which came back into the third dimension and 
it, did it disappear again? I am sure it did after they corrected whatever problem they were having. You see, sometimes if they get too low and the uh, electromagnetic field is touches the outside of their ship, it becomes visible. So, and it also throws off their mechanics somewhat. So, they need to move upwards and they need to correct that immediately to, to return to fourth dimensional. Not that it's dangerous to be in the third dimensional area, except that they might be shot down or, <laughs> or probed by the, the Earth. So, and that they do not want. Okay. All right? Yes, thank you. Um, Brian asks about his son, Logan. He wanted to know his vibrational frequency, but I know you don't want to answer that. Not right today, now. not today. But he also wanted to know what extraterrestrial group is working with Logan. Logan is saying things to him that is making him believe that he has extraterrestrial friends, which he very much does. The problem with this is that he does not see them as extraterrestrials, necessarily. And they are Pleiadians that are working with him. And he has the beginnings of telepathy, and that is why they are talking to Logan. Great. He is an exceptional child. Go ahead. Thanks. Thank you. Is it everything for Brian? Mm hmm Yep, that's it for Brian. I wanted to ask about Ukraine. You know, somehow my friends and family are pushing me into that Ukraine question. So I, my answer is that Whatever happens there has been pre-planned and there is some conspiracy underneath. Yes. Can you divulge anything in that direction? You would have to ask Al about this, but I can tell you that this is just one of the scenarios you will be seeing more often. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's you know, a nice answer. Um, basically, is Putin driven by extraterrestrials? Yes. Which one? But let me tell you this: he is not aware of it. Uh huh. He is two of his high council people that he talks to much of the time are influencing him because of their high intelligence and their very high logic pushing him into a non-emotional state, which he is in now. If you ever noticed him, he cannot hardly smile any longer. He cannot hardly smile because there is no emotion within him okay. any longer. They have got him to a point of brainwashing and change that he will listen to them pretty much without doubt. Nice. Uh, is the military industrial complex in control? It's a white, white complex, but is it in control in the situation? It has some control. It is trying not to look like it is in control. What is the goal of military industrial complex in this conflict? To take control, but it will not show that hand at this time. So all major countries are involved there, like Not Israel, all. America... There are strands British. and ties everywhere in the world together. This is one of the things about your world that is so interesting. It is so diverse, it is so connected, and it's so disconnected at the same time. The strands that are connected are usually of a higher and more negative level. The strands that are disconnected are of the people and the cultures. Whenever they reach, a, a, whenever they reach the height of power, they forget about the cultures, the, the, the habits of the people, and they become connected in a power grid. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And when they become connected in a power grid, all the things below that become secondary. Mm -hmm. And so there's much connection at the top around the earth. Uh, your top officials, your intel intellectuals, all these are brought together in an unemotional tie mm -hmm. of intellect and information. Okay. Whereas the people underneath are the struggling people and have connections not to one another but to their maybe their family and friends but not around the world 
Whereas this connection is global and dangerous. What is so valuable in Ukraine? <coughs> What's so? What is the? Uh, is there a supernatural value it's, there? No, the value of Ukraine is that it is not valuable, and it's a test site. Ah, no vortices, no hidden bases which should be controlled. Not this is it. a test. Uh huh. Test of technology. This is a test to see how much life is being removed in that area and how much life is sustained with this kind of action. All right. Th does that make sense to you? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we can continue with the questions. Is it your phone ringing there? I think I turned it off. Let me put, carry it away because uh, it was this um, electromagnetic interference yeah. which records. I think it was in this pocket. Do you want us to take that? Yeah, get it out. It buzzed. I have a couple of questions. Take this. Thank you. Oh, do you not mind <laughs> I think it was this that buzzed. I felt a vibration in the body. I might be incorrect. That might have been just a muscle spasm, I think but <laughs> I think it could have been a muscle spasm as well, but I did not check. Did you say you have another question? I want to. Oh, yes, right. yes, I do. Um, well, people were asking about the sons. My son, Ian, um, no, he seems to be on this like paranoid, negative sort of path, and some of it's kind of scary. And I, is he, has he been attacked by these reptilians or something? One moment. Sure. What is the age so that I get the right child? He's 46. Ah, not a child. <sighs> That's why. Yeah. Disenchantment. You said paranoid. Yeah. I will speak to you at a personal level later. Okay. Lisa has more questions. Mm -hmm. I have some questions from Starseed Apprentice. Uh huh. Um, do I have any health conditions or issues holding me back from going to the colonies? No. Uh, what do your people do for leisure? Do you play puzzle games? Do you have a form of television? <laughs> we do many things for leisure. We have many celebrations, as you know. Celebrations are a time of great communication and joy and happiness. We do these after we have graduated from a curriculum, but we also celebrate things other than that as well, like the birth of a child, as uh, well as the um, renewal of uh, faith in some things, bringing back uh, emotional connections. Some children go through this, I think, in every culture. When the child is brought back into the realm of adulthood after being a child for a while, we celebrate that. I'm not sure what you would call it here. But that is one thing we celebrate. We also celebrate um, times in our past that were very happy times of connection for our planet and for the, all the planets. The, all three planets will celebrate at once the, the, uh, the, uh, the birth of Lear and Eden because that was a wonderful and great thing in, in the galaxy. And we also mourn the destruction of Lyra as well. So, but we mourn it with a celebration. And the reason we do that is because we know that the Lyran civilization has flourished and gone all over the universe, the of the galaxy, I should say, and flourish and are, are wonderful beings, but they were the first Edens, so... 
Oh, where was it located? Where in Lyra? Lyra was... There's myths about where it was. I, many, many cultures were within... With, how do I say it? Many cultures were still young when Lyra was destroyed as well. Mm -hmm. But ours was very old. And so, according to our... Uh, predictions and knowledge and locations it was in right outside the Pleiadian star system but it, it it does have some just a moment cheek hush The rubble from the planet that exploded there is still there. So. But Lyran constellation is not where Pleiades are. Correct. So was it in Pleiades or in Lyran constellation? It, it was outside of Pleiadian constellation, which means that it was probably... Wait a minute. Hold on. There's interference right now. I will be back. no one better to tell of Lyran history than I. Of course. Please do. Yes. I interfered with Lakesh's transmission. It was incorrect. Please, correct me. Yes, it was in Lyran space. You are correct. Yes. And there, he was correct that the remains of the planet remain there. Our culture mourns that destruction. However, we are great in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. We have moved to many places, Sirius, Andromeda, Pleiades, many different areas of the galaxy accept us for who we are and celebrate our history. Mm -hmm. And this is why we are best to tell the story of our creation. Please do. I believe Lakesh began to tell it. That when, uh, but let me go back farther. Yes. At the inception of creation, there was nothing but electronic zaps between a cloud of matter and antimatter. These electronic charges, like what you call static electricity, mm -hmm. but they were yard, millions of miles long. But they started to create a sentient pattern. The creator was within it and realized that he had to connect himself to these particles. And when he did, this is where the gold beings were created at the beginning. The ones that Lakesh mentioned that were visiting this one person. Yes. And after this sentience came together and came out came the golden part. The golden streams of light that had sentience and they could break off and become other things so they were creation in themselves mm -hmm. does this make sense yes yes perfect sense. so this is the beginning mm -hmm. 
the very beginning and when I will move forward instead of going into a huge history of the beginning I will tell you that when Lyra was created Lyra was created it was like an Eden the beings broke off and became perfect in this one area like what you would call a Garden of Eden and they had freedom just the same but the reptilians became jealous of this because they were not given this opportunity they were created in another way and in another circumstance and they became very jealous of the creation of the Lyran perfection and so it caused trouble and trauma and these Innocent Lyrans knew not what was happening to them when they were attacked. It was like something never seen before, never been before. And this is why they were destroyed. They had no way of protecting themselves. Mm -hmm. But they escaped through the gold entities to other places. The other gold entities saw what was happening. And they are the closest thing to what you would call an angel in this day because they were created and they are eternal. Some angels are not eternal. I have to correct that. Some angels are eternal and some angels are not eternal. It's a whole another topic. But these gold entities saved many of them and scattered them into the, into the galaxy. Mm -hmm and they became accepted and their culture was taught to them from others who knew what that planet was like but were not jealous and were not hateful but grew up in a understanding culture and when they discovered that the Lyrans were good and kind and helpful they became equals and this is how our race proliferated. Does this make sense to you? Yes, thank you. Uh, is Liren Star still uh, shining in the sky? Liren Star is still available, yes. Which star in the constellation is that? I cannot tell you that. Shh. There are things that cannot be discovered now. How do extraterrestrials call our constellation? Are we part of any constellation which is referred to as a constellation? Oh, I see. You mean from another... No, there is nothing... Your star is in a part of a constellation, but not the Earth. That's not a constant. Oh, yes, okay. <coughs> Fendor. Fendor? Is the Lyran name for your constellation. Fendor. 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 Uh, how about Pleiadians? They use Fendor as well as their own. Oh, wow. I do not know what they call it, but they have a name for it as well. Oh. I will ask to pet. Okay. Trinden. Trinden. Trinden? Trinden. Trinden. It is a part of, the, of a three star constellation. Which, what are the other two stars? You will have to find out when you see it for yourself. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, can you also, I ask everybody, and uh, can you give us counting in your language from 1 to 20? There is no time for that. All right. Thank you for your uh, time. And Ask your me history. one of the questions. I am here to answer one question, and it is the next one. All right. The next one was a question to Lakesh, but maybe you can answer this. It was for me, actually, because Lakesh does not know it as well okay. as I do. Okay. The question is, what is your education system and facilities like? Mm, perhaps it was for the <laughs> 
I was thinking it was a different question. Could you ask the next one? Okay. I can, I'll have Lukash answer that one. This is from Starseed Apprentice also. He asks, can you tell me more about my star family because I do not remember meeting them at all. Please tell them that I miss them so dearly and that I would like to contact them again. Yes, your star family will be in contact with you again, Starseed. I know this because they are right now in the process of trying to get you approved for a trip. Wonderful. Um, the cash would not know that, actually. Okay. But I am going back to Lakesh. That is all I'm going to tell you for about that for now. Okay. Thank you. I will bring Lakesh back if he is available. Okay. Greetings. 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 Yeah, for sure. I can only stay for a short time, but what the question about our, what was it? Your education system and facilities? Oh, yes. Well, that is easy. I have explained it before, I believe. Our educational system is individualized. We, t at a very early age, we're giving aptitude tests in several different areas. More, more aptitude tests than you would ever take as a human. But this individualizes each child and puts them in the highest frame of their understanding and learning. And therefore, their first curriculum will be their most beloved curriculum and that will help them to want to learn more. Mm. Nice. So their first curriculum becomes their most beloved curriculum and then we attach until the age of 20 earth years, not our years, up till they're about 20 earth years, we connect the next best levels to their education and aptitude until they are 20. And then they get to decide where they go from there. And many of them, having gone through much wonderful learning, choose subjects that they would not usually choose and choose subjects that are a, a, apart from them rather than so close because they know all the things that are within them and all the things that are like them in their aptitude, they choose things that are more challenging and this becomes the well-rounded individual that they are. They, we do make suggestions, of course, and we tell them why we're making the suggestions, but it's totally up to them what they decide. And as you graduate through your curriculums, there are celebrations. And there are times when there are struggles with your curriculum. And what happens then is that you move backwards slightly and then circle around forwards. And what this does, when you move backwards, it, it actually catapults you up into a higher frame because you'll say, ah, oh, I got it now. So that you don't have to repeat all of it, just the things that were giving the basis of the problem. So instead of like repeating grades or repeating total scenarios of education, you repeat a basic form that was not understood and therefore it enlightens the rest of the curriculum. Do you understand that? Also, the places where we go to do our curriculum can be very different. Some places are filled with people because this is the kind of area that this kind of thing would be learned the best. Social skills and social 
media activities, writing, and things of that way, watching, th interacting, those kinds of skills between classes become very, very part of the learning process. So, and then others are isolated when they are learning something very difficult or learning something that needs to be totally perfect in a sense and totally applied in a very serious way to their their life force. So sometimes there's a hundred people in a room and sometimes there's no people in a room and, and multiples in between there. Now, let's see. The grading system, like what you have, it does not exist because everyone gets an A because this they're performing to their highest level, you see. Their highest level is as high as they can go. If they're not performing to their highest level, then they are do not graduate. They but when they reach that highest level of learning that they can get, then they move on. Thank you. Great, thank you. You're welcome. But now I must go because I know that you have many, many questions. But there are things that must be done, and I have much to do today. I am enjoying seeing you, though, and I was happy that you invited me to answer questions. Bye, Good. <laughs> Bye, Sophia, and Charlie, and Lisa, and Max, and Margie. Bye-bye. Thank you. I'm going to take a break now. <coughs> Okie dokie. Thank you. I'll Thank bring you some stuff to Hey. Great job. Thank you, Jim. Oh, thanks. Thank you. I, I will have to hang up now I, uh, for technical reasons. Have a nice day. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. How do you feel? I feel okay. If there's